Welcome everybody to the r and CatCast, a fan-based podcast focusing on Montana State athletics. We're two dudes named Ryan from the state of Washington talking about our dear Montana State. We hope you enjoy. All right, welcome back, Bobcat fans. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the r and after dark for us oh my gosh it's an instant reaction show we just laid a whooping on weaver 40 to nothing whoop First down out in like uh forever i think since 2016 uh my buddy sent me anyways it's we're all over it it's it's an amazing win a statement win we're here to talk about it just kind of get the good the bad the ugly and go down the big sky what happened today because there was you know if you didn't catch the grizzlies lost to Northern Arizona, that's a bad loss. Thorny, I'm just going everywhere right now. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic, man. It was so good to sit down and watch an entire Bobcat football game in like a normal time zone, watch the whole thing live, and then the way it played out, fantastic. I wore my Gold Rush shirt because I wasn't sure what shirt to wear. I'm like, I didn't get a chance to wear this. So that's the shirt I chose. As you know, if you listen to this show, uh, I'm I'm not super superstitious, but the one of the things I am kind of superstitious about is what shirt I wear for a game, and uh, this one turned out good. So, great hmm. great night for Bobcat fans. Great night to be a Bobcat. What a what a win. The only thing I could attribute this win to was I put up my old Bobcat flag, and I got that flag in the 2018 Cat Grizz. It was, like showed up on my door, the Miracle of Missoula. <laughs> and I've been flying a different Bobcat flag, and I was like, I'm going to go with the OG flag today. There you go, Bobcat fans. There you go. All well, right, we both <laughs> did it. We both willed our team to victory via fabrics. <laughs> Has everything to do with it. <laughs> oh, man, I'm I'm feeling good. I got a little glass of uh, Dram Brewery here, a little celebratory glass to cap the evening. Lovely. Lovely. I would have joined you, but I have a road race tomorrow morning, okay. and so I'm trying to come down <laughs> and drink some water. I don't even have some water. I just rushed downstairs to record this podcast. All right, let's get into it. Uh, let's go into ESPN. I'm going to use my phone for the first time, and then so the little... Have you ever been on the website and they start playing the the ads in the background when we're doing the podcast? And oh, yeah. You're like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's happened. Plenty of times. Many, many of times. I've usually uh, edited them out, but not always. <laughs> okay. So we'll see. I'm trying to work smarter, right, not harder. I'll do the here. first one since you're in the middle of that. Let's talk about the one that's currently happening right now. Uh, UC Davis and Eastern Washington are currently going at it. Two minutes and eight seconds left in the third quarter as I type this. Uh, or as I type this, what is wrong with me? As I say this, I'm not typing anything. Uh, close game. UC Davis, 24, Eastern 20. Kind of a back and forth game. Kind of a crazy game. The running back for UC Davis has something like, uh, let me pull it up. He had 244 yards about nine minutes ago. So let's pull it up. I'm curious what he is. It's Larson. His last name is Larson. He is up to 255 yards on the ground on 22 carries. <laughs> Jeez. But he does have a long of 78. Long of 78. That'll do it. But he's probably got another long of 70 in there. I mean, 255 yards through. Two and a half quarters is crazy. Absolutely. But he's most of their offense still looking at the numbers. But yeah, good game going there. Davis, uh, you know, I'm rooting for Davis because pretty much I always root against Eastern. I'm with you, buddy. All right. Uh, let's jump down to Cal Poly Portland State. Portland State coming out two and two, 59 to 21 against Cal Poly. I don't know if this tells us anything about Portland State or just how bad Cal Poly is. But Portland State's coming to Bozeman next week for homecoming. Cats are going to be ready for them. That'll be an interesting matchup, man. Portland State has been scoring a ton of points against two real bad opponents. But, you know, Bobcats have played bad opponents before and not put up ridiculous numbers. So we'll see. That could be a, that could be an interesting, sneaky matchup. Coming off a big win uh, against Weber State. Like, that, that, could be a, that could be a trap game if, if you believe in trap games. I don't. <laughs> I don't think I do either, and Brent Vegan, I don't think he does either. <laughs> okay. Hey, man, I watched this one stem to stern today. Sac State, Idaho State. 
Idaho pulls it off 36, 27. It wasn't even that close. They got a scoop and score on the, the good old, you know, last play lateral. You mean it was closer than that? Yeah. So they hit a, they hit a field goal with like five seconds left to go up three. And then they kicked it off to Sac state. Sac state was doing, trying to, you know, do the Cal band thing where they were trying to <laughs> pitch it and all that stuff. And they, they fumbled it. And so the vandals run it in, but that was a chippy, chippy game. And both those teams were smack talking the whole time, personal fouls, late hits, bad hits, hard hits. And it was just, it was a messy physical football game in the Kibbe dome. That was not full by the way. Like, Come on, Vandals. If like, you can't you have fill four, it up for that against the you top. You have four home games, and you're a top five team. Right. Let's go. I was I was really disappointed to see that. Anyways, so yeah, they took down Stingers down, right? Idaho's, they're probably going to flip-flop. So I think Idaho was seven, SAC was four. I imagine they just essentially swap spots. Yeah, I think those two play again in SAC in Sacramento, it's probably a similar out- outcome the other way around. I think that that evenly matched. That was a pretty entertaining game. Two two top ten Big Sky teams right there. Two elite teams. Big Sky's good this year. I think we've got some squads. One thing that stood out to me, G- Giovanni McCoy took a hit akin to what Malai had in um, Eastern last year when he banged his head off the, the turf. And it was not called targeting. It was clearly targeting. And I was like, wow, man, that went uncalled. Jason Eck was losing his mind, absolutely losing his mind on the sideline. And then McCoy, he just stayed in the game. I don't know if he's concussed and just worked through it. I don't know how he could not be concussed. He was slow to get up, and they just left him in. Huh. Well, something to monitor. Interesting. Yeah, if nothing else. Well, two teams that were in the top tier bailing it out there, but I think a team that is no longer... In anybody's top tier, Montana Grizzlies, go down to Flagstaff, go down 21 to 14 at halftime, never scored a point again. Gave up seven more points in AU, lose 28 to 14 in Flagstaff. That's probably the worst loss I've seen for a Grizz team in a decade. That's a bad loss. It is a bad loss. Bobby Houck on the sideline just looks done. He looks tired. I think he just wants to be done with this. Yeah. Listless, tired. It's a contract year from what I understand, so might be Bobby's last year. He looks grumpy. He was grumpy in the post-game interview. He got after the re, uh, the reporter from Missoula, Frank. Uh, Frank somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Frank asked him kind of a leading question, and he about bit his head off. <laughs> but the thing that's concerning to me, I mean, not concerning because, like, I don't care. Yeah. The Grizz are, <laughs> okay, who cares? You know, like, come on, right? <laughs> I mean, we kind of revel in it a little bit, but signs of just giving up across the board for the Grizzlies, and that's a hallmark of their team is not. They, they play hard, and I saw complete opposite of that today. And so, I mean, say, like what, said, say what you want about Bobby Houck teams and Bobby Houck. His teams usually play hard. And they usually play hard the whole game. Yeah. To see them give up like that, to see p- players taking plays off, to walk into the sidelines, it's something I haven't really seen. And I, things are not well in Missoula. No. I'm, no, no. The, the Grizz fan pod will be an interesting listen uh, this week. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting to where they go from here, the outlook, because this is – feels very much like a circle the wagons kind of moment for the Grizzlies. I mean, this could be a game where they a rock bottom, they kind of figure some stuff out and go and run. Who knows? Crazier things have happened, but yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That was a, uh, I was not sad at all. And I was also not sad to see primetime Deion Sanders, Colorado get smoked by Oregon either. So a couple, Holy t- cow. couple teams I was hoping to lose today lost. And then the Bobcats won. It was a, it's a fantastic day. And the Cougs won. Cougs held on against Oregon State. Look at that. As were a couple nice. of Cougs by by marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good win for the Cougs. Speaking of Colorado State, by the way, just shout out to Ty Gregorak, who is a buff himself. So, or not Colorado State, Colorado. There you go. It's good to have him back on the call. And my l- wife laughed from the other room when he pulled out a Dumb and Dumber reference and totally redeems himself. <laughs> 
I love like the just the awkward pause after he does that. He does he it. Pulls he, him out like once a game. I love it. Yeah, he he does the totally redeem himself. He's done that one before, and he just does it. And then like Ben Creighton or Creighton, I'm sorry if I don't don't pronounce his name, the play by play guy. He's just like just, there's just silence for like five seconds. <laughs> They're a good crew. They're fun to listen to. Sunburst Montana, Ben. Oh, bed. <laughs> yeah, you gotta add the Ben in there. He did it two, two different times. I love it. You know, it. he's been waiting to do it for a couple months now. <laughs> yeah. He's like, this is it's a thing now. This is what I do every time Trayton Pickering does anything at all. Sunburst. Yeah. And we got to credit Coach Ty with the Alaskan Assassin. He's a good color commentator. Yeah. Good I enjoy him. him. We, we did like, you know, a second, second win for Ty Gregorak. He does a great job at it. Yeah. He's very entertaining. He's knowledgeable. He's fun to listen to. All right. Do you want to cover right. the last game of the slate? Yeah. You know, I, I told you last week, Thorny, these Idaho State Bengals are going to get a win. They, they're going to sling it around. There's no stats in uh, in the ESPN. So they, they did beat. There's no stats. There's no stats. So I couldn't no even tell you. No scoring plays available. No game cast. They, they beat the, the Batland Bears. Not even Northern ESPN Colorado. cares. Not even the ADs or... The SIDs, whoever's in charge, yeah, SIDs care about submitting scores or whatever it takes to get this done. Everyone's just like, who cares? <laughs> yeah, 35-21. Good job, Bengals. Good job. Uh, Cody Hawkins, I guess, got his first win as a head coach, so congratulations because uh, your your dad's in a dogfight here against Eastern. Hope they pulled out. Yeah, well, let's hope the Hawkins go 2-0 and on the day. All right, that's enough about the rest of the big sky. Around the big sky. Around the big sky up. has been arounded. It's been rounded. <laughs> oh, man. Let's get into the fun stuff, man. What a win. What a all-time performance. What a just dominating feel-good. You, you got to be feeling so good as a Bobcat fan right now. Just so good. Man. Right? I thought today was either going to be a a close one, a nail biter, or we would go away winning big time. And I was leaning towards obviously the nail biter, but I knew this was in the cards because otherwise we don't play. We seem to either blow them out or play close ones. That's what Montana state does. And I did not see this coming thorny, but we look so stinking good. This is a statement win for Montana state. I have five people texting me, including you. And all of them are kind of saying the same thing. Are we this good? National champs, question mark. Are we this good? Oh, my gosh. Huge win, blah, blah, blah. All of them. What do you think? Are we this good? I think there's a tiny bit of a reservation still because I don't know how good Weber really is, but we're in that tier. I think we've moved up a tier from last year. I really do. That does. Now it's such a hard schedule this year. So it's like even if we lose one – road game this year i don't know if that changes that trajectory too much but i think the cats are in that tier where they could win a national championship and i think you can do it with tommy or sean honestly preferably I both like sean but i mean i like tommy too people are gonna get on me they already have but i think our offense homes way better with sean he just presents more multiplicity is that the right word? I'm not sure. I don't he know. just better. Like he, we can do more with him. Yes, is is where I'm going. I think the this. playbook and, can open up with with Sean. Yeah, that's not a knock against Tommy. It just is what it is. And like I think Tommy's kind of limited with his height. I don't know if he can see the field as good as Sean. He can't fix that. Well, well, when's the last time, for example, this happened several times tonight, where Chambers went back, got a little bit of pressure, but then he rolled out and he just stood there like bouncing his feet all the time in the world. When's the last time you saw Tommy ever do that? He, he If he would have rolled out like that and he would have seen saw some green in front of him, he would have just taken off. Play action. We ran the... Sh- uh, the, 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 the snot out of... The snot. <laughs> Got to play action tonight. Whew, and I, I know Weaver wasn't ready for that. I mean, that wasn't on film. Going under center. Going under center play. all game. What a... We looked like... North Dakota State coming yeah. out under center, 
doing like a lot of heavy personnel stuff and then taking deep shots off of play action. Like that's NDSU's playbook. And I don't know how I feel about like trying to copy that or necessarily or whatever, but it worked really well and it looked good. Well, what it does is it puts it out all out on the field. We have everything on film. We could be we could have a mix of everything right now. And I really like that. Because you're going to key in on that. Okay, we'll go to the plus one run game. I'm going to key in on that. Okay, we'll go underneath center. We'll do play action. What do you want to do? The only question now I have is like, okay, when Tommy comes back, which I'm thinking we all probably think this is probably going to be beyond the bye, post bye week, does he usurp Chambers? How does he come back? This is the same stinking thing we did last year. (laughs) We all fell in love with the Chambers offense and then, okay, Tommy's back. QB number one. Yeah, and then we came love back Tommy and took again. us all the way to the semifinals. Yeah. So. <laughs> it was a good problem to have, right? It really is. Like, I think the distance between the two is pretty narrow. One does maybe one, other things better than the other one, and, and that's why they're such a good complement to each other. But I just think overall the offense looks more dynamic and it passes the eye test better when Chambers isn't. And maybe yeah. the small sample size, right? It, what happens if Chambers starts four games in a row? Maybe things look different and it's easy right. to sit here and say like, oh, he had one great game. He had one great game against UC Davis. Let's see chambers full time. But I don't know. It's, it's tempting though. It really is. Cause it just passes. It just looks better. And we went into Weaver. Weaver was a top 10 team. I think they were number 10. I think I'll were, look this up. I think they were 10. Monday. Monday. Yeah. And we, we shut them out, man. And we hung a 40 burger on them. At one point we were state had like Brendan 60 Halls. some yards of offense in the third quarter. Right. Well, Brendan Hall's like uh, yips. I mean, he's got the yeah. case of the yips right now. That would have been like 47, maybe, maybe close to 50. Who knows, right? Huge leg, though. It, both those kicks had plenty of leg, but he missed them in the same manner, pushed them both right. So yeah. not ideal. And that's what I've been noticing early on with his uh, PATs. There's been some inconsistencies with his PATs this year. Sometimes he boots them right through and they lo- look lovely. Sometimes he knuckles them. And oftentimes he sneaks him up through the right, the right side of the field goal post. And so I'm like, man, we haven't had to kick many field goals just because we haven't. I knew that was going to be a problem, or I, I had a feeling it was going to be a problem. So when it reared its head, head today, I was like, yeah, that's kind of where I was thinking. Cotsman wouldn't be surprised to see him come in as the place kicker duty holder. I don't know, another Butte guy drill. Root four, what do you think? It's worth giving them a shot. I think the Paul's got to start something out. Yeah, I, th- I, I still think they're going to give Hall a shot, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he has the yips again. They got to get him ball. in the bullpen, warming up in the bullpen, yeah. Kotsman. <laughs> to use a baseball analogy. So if we're going to put things in the in our typical good, okay, and bad category, I mean, really the only bad category is Hall, right? I can't think of much else in this game. That was bad, like no. actually bad. Let's go back to the good. Let's re- let's let's go back to that. Can we talk about the defense? Unbelievable. So, what are you seeing? What I I put this on Bobcat Nation that one of the, my main, main thing in this game after watching some film on Weaver State, just tackle, just wrap up, like yep. don't let them bounce off tackles, and make big plays. I mean that's common sense, obviously, but. I think that was really important against Weber State. And the very first play of the game, Bankson bounces off to the right. It looks like he's going to have a big gain. Askelson comes in and shoestring tackles him, gets him down to the ground for a seven-yard gain. And the Cats actually forced three, forced three and out on that. The tackling was fantastic all night long. Probably the best single tackling performance I've seen out of Montana State Certainly since Brent Vigan was here, but I, I don't even know if I can. This is a, even better than the Troy Anderson era. Like there was like no missed tackles. It was a fantastic nope. performance. We look like our, we know our assignments better. The boys are playing faster and hitting harder. And then the emergence of Drew Paldor, what he can do in the box. The same things that uh, Jeff Manning wasn't able to do or maybe not wouldn't wasn't do. able w- willing to do <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, right uh i just it just works for our defense i think we found the perfect type of free safety for willie max 
Yeah. Play calls. I mean, there were several times where the running back or quarterback went one way and bounced back the other way, and you're thinking, okay, he's gonna he's gonna like cut back. You know that you know running backs do that where they go one way and then all of a sudden they're going back the other way, and then there's everyone already <laughs> went the other way. But there was a couple different times where a safety or somebody just flew in and blew that up. Polidor did it a couple times. Ryland Ort had a really good one. It's like this is what I've been waiting to see. Man, and Polidor almost had his first sack. <laughs> almost, and he gave it to C. Gave it to C. Bass, as uh, Greg Rack would say. Don't but, give it to C. Bass. Take those numbers, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Came flying in, forced the sack. It's all you really care about as a fan and defensive coordinator, but yeah, as a player, Polidor's like, come on. Did you? Text me. We had nine sacks. Is that actually it, true? Sh- it showed up on the screen. Oh, now, word. unless that somehow said like totals on the year, I don't know why they would give you a yearly total after the game. It had to have been for the game. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of sacks in that game. Jeez, Elise. I'd have to go. To, I don't have that bookmarked anymore. Uh, that stat page because ESPN is not going to show you that. But I think there were. I mean, it felt like there was probably nine sacks, especially I'm mean, late in the garbage time too. They were still getting sacks. That's one of the things I loved was come fourth quarter when we were starting to play the second stringers, like, oh, Weaver's going to nickel and dime us down the, down the field and get like a, a cheap one, right? They never did. <laughs> I was like, yes. And then Elijah Elliott bounces for, I don't know, I haven't looked at the stats, but probably like a 40, 50 yard touchdown, which was like, I was just like, that's my boy. Go Elliott. But I was like, oh, no. We got two minutes left. They're going to go down and it. shut out. At that point, but you no, want the shutout, right? <laughs> we did it. That was so cool. You're starting to get cocky as fans when it's the fourth quarter and like, let's just get a shutout now, right? Yeah. What a game. This felt like, remember Sammy Houston State when you played them in the quarterfinals? Yes. How everything just seemed to fall into place and it was just a dominant victory. It's kind of felt like that. I agree with that. Um, I want, to, I want to call out Julius Davis. He had a hell of a game. 14 carries, 132 yards. He run hard, man. He gets up for these big games. I feel like he's the guy who, like, when the, when the moment's the biggest is when he gets, like, juiced up. He was amped up, and he was squawking, and he— Did he blow a kiss? I had to rewind it. He absolutely <laughs> burst through a hole off to the sideline, <laughs> mid, like, running as hard as he could. The quickest little two finger kiss to the Weber State sideline, and then turned his head right back, and then got like eight more yards. Oh my gosh! I was like Stone Cold. Stone Cold. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. I think it's pretty funny, but it's a little, little dickish. (laughs) But man, man. he was he was feeling it. That's all. Like he was feeling it, man. He was taunt. He was mixing it up. He was taunting. He was. He runs hard. He's stiff arming people. He's hard to bring down. He's been a great addition to the to the running back room, especially with Lane Sumner out. Now we got Julius Davis, and then we have two guys behind him. I feel confident in uh, White and Elliott. It's like the the running game's humming right now. I wonder what we do with Scott Tree. He got one touch. Yeah, when did he get that? It must have been a way in the late in the game. I kind of stopped paying so much attention there in the last well, couple drives because you start thinking like, okay, we're not going to use him. Are we going to preserve his red shirt? Now he's touched the ball three all games. Four games. Oh, is it all four three games? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, yeah, his red shirt's gone. So, th- no, maybe he didn't touch the game at South Dakota. He might have not got a touch at South Dakota. I don't State. think he did. Okay, so still, so I guess he's still got a game left. I don't know. That's I a weird. What one. we'll do with him? I don't know. That seems one. silly if we are just giving him one carry. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Uh, all right. All right. Well, let's. Uh, you know, these are our shorter episodes. Anything else in the good? Oh, there's going to be tons. Uh, <laughs> I just play calling, man. Just a different design. John Chambers finding open receivers. Trayton Pickering having himself a day. Sunburst. Touchdown. Almost 100 yards, 83 yards. Man, that, that guy just had, yeah. Just a play calling in general. And then the Bobcats not wilting in a big-time game. I thought this was, I, I said it all week. This is a revenge game for Weaver. <laughs> They're going to have to wait to next year because we just smacked the heck out of them. And that, that was one 
one huge win for Montana State. Statement win. Again, statement win. Especially when the Grizzlies lost. It's a moment in time in 2023 where you can go, wow, our programs feel like they're really just opposite tra- trajectories, right? Yeah, right. And this is the this is the time slot too where there were some marquee games earlier. And those finished up. All eyes were on the Bobcats Weber State game. Like the entire probably SES landscape was watching this game. And we took care of business in a yeah. dominating fashion and left no doubt that we absolutely hung should have been in that game with South Dakota State. That wasn't like a fluke or anything. Montana State is here. You know, you know, if I had to vote in the power poll, Brian Marcel, I think that's uh, non-inclusive of you not to include me just because I'm not on social media anymore. Just going to put that out there. But if I had to vote, Montana State would easily be number one. I thought they looked better in all facets, more so than Idaho or SAC. I would agree. No, I didn't fully watch the other Idaho SAC, SAC game, so I don't have a total opinion on that, but it's hard to foresee either one of those, like if, if either one of those teams played next weekend, like Montana State, I think would be a favorite against either one of those teams. Maybe not on the road, be. but they should be. I'd feel good about winning either one of those games or having a good chance anyway. Montana so, State's probably going to be number two in the nation this week. I think I think I think they'll get rewarded for it. I think it's hard it's hard when you're a team like North Dakota State and you're the a pretty decently number two, like not clear number two, but like I think they're solidly number two. And you don't play a game and you get leapfrogged. It happens. I think Montana State is done enough to leapfrog a um number two on a bye. I agree. Gosh, man, that was that felt good. That's just my best thing about this that's in the good category is it just feels good to be a Bobcat fan right now. That was a good victory. I I was thinking all week long or all day long, excuse me, I guess more today. I want I wanted to put this out there before I get too too far off the rails. You mentioned last year, I don't remember what game it was, but you said like the Bobcats can win this game and it doesn't have to be close. That's how I was feeling about this game. It's like the Bobcats can win and it doesn't have to be close. And I wasn't expecting 40 to zero, but man, the Bobcats, to quote Breaking Bad, we are the one who knocks right now. (laughs) (laughs) I was so worried about Bankston. Nothing. I was worried about being over over the top. You know what was getting home? Our pass rush. (laughs) It's just, I love it. Everything's coming together. Bankston so, had a long of 10. Yeah. That was the longest run. Of, it was 10 yards. The longest run I, anybody I'm had the was Weaver. 14. I, I'm Weaver. watching the Weaver. I'm watching the Eastern game right now. Take a look at the stats for me, Tony. Uh, how many first downs did Weaver have? Okay, one second real was quick. It like seven or eight? It, uh, I clicked off of it. Yeah. Well, we'll recap it uh, Monday. Didn't feel like much. No. No, I'm not sure they had double digits on it. You only had 66 yards going into I guess they ended the up with 13. Quarter. They got 13. Okay. But check this. Uh, I don't want to get too far into the stats. They were 3 for 17 on third down. Woo! 3 for 17! You're not going to win any football game going from no. 3 for 17. The Bobcats were 5 of 12, so not, not great. Looking at that, it's like, okay, that was worse than I remembered it being. Eh. They were 2 for 6 on fourth down. So on their third and fourth down tries, they were a combined five of 23. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Woof, as Brent Wahlberg likes to put on Twitter. Woof. Woof. Hey, uh, did you notice a sidetrack moment? Uh, did you know Kylan Weezer? Did, did you see that he had like two wedding rings on his left hand? No. But they were on like his pointer finger and... I didn't know their wedding rings then. No, maybe it was middle finger and pinky finger. He had two like silver bands on. It's the weirdest thing. Is that a religious thing? Is that like, is he Mormon? I don't know. I, I couldn't put it together. I didn't notice any rings, but yeah, maybe he's got, he's the, the, the poly lifestyle down there. Don't go there. <laughs> well, I don't know if you got multiple wedding rings, like you said. What else could that be? 
I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't even think they were on his like traditional wedding finger. It was just weird. I you don't see. I mean, you see the guys with uh, like Andy Dalton always had one of those like rubberized wedding rings, yeah. and then Bronson Barron had one last year. Bronson Barron? Well, I don't know. Maybe some some cultural thing down there. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't notice it. Yeah. I wasn't. But these were know. actual like look like silver band. You, wedding think, you rings. wouldn't think anyone was wearing that kind of stuff playing football. Yeah, two of them. It was just really odd. Huh. Anyways, all right, Thorny, this is it. That was a good game. Great game. I loved it. It was a great game. Enjoy it, Bobcats. I mean, this is uh, it's what we live for as fans. These moments, soak it in, enjoy it. Don't worry about the next day. Listen to this, and uh, we'll come back on Monday. We'll we'll give you the full rundown, and then we'll preview homecoming. But you should feel very proud as a Bobcat right now. It's a good time to be a Bobcat. Great time. Great, great way to end the podcast. Well said. Let's go, go Cats, go Cats. Mm-hmm.